Item number SCP-4992 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-4992 is to be kept in a refrigerated single item drawer within B2 storage at Site 63. Removal is approved only for testing purposes and with written permission from the Senior Containment Specialist and Lead Researcher. Description SCP-4992 is a designation to four Charlotte bulbs, with each given a sub-designation SCP-4992-1 through 4. SCP-4992 is visually indistinguishable from non-anonymous members of its species. Given moments of exposing or manipulating a cloth of SCP-4992, note particularly cutting and mincing, an individual will report hearing music designated SCP-4992-B, despite no detection of corresponding auditory signatures in this vicinity. Instances of SCP-4992 thought to be auditory hallucinations. Reportedly, update, feature a minor tonality, sparse instrumentation, mournful lyrics that describe the hardships of low socio-economic rural life, and of a heightened pitch relative to the included instruments. SCP-4992-B may precipitate tearing, as in commonly observed with members of Allium Sepa. However, tearing does not occur via synpropethenol S oxide. Note, responsible for hygromode stimulation in non-anonymous members of the onion family, as anomalously, no such molecules have been detected in, upon, or around SCP-4992. Furthermore, chemical reactivity to SCP-4992 has not been observed in the corneal nerve endings, as would otherwise be expected. Neural scans instead show increased activity in the auditory centers, the limbic system, and the substantia nigra. Note, a primary site of dopamine release. These findings are consistent with the brain's response to music. Approximately 5% of SCP-4992-1 and 10% of SCP-4992-2 remain as the anomalous properties were suspected only after being utilized for several dishes, SCP-4992-3 has been peeled all over its outer layers with a third removed by a utility knife. Aside from small incisions made inside testing, SCP-4992-4 is undisturbed from its originally procured state. The relative rate of decay so far observed suggests that SCP-4992's shelf life may exceed 10 to the 22nd power years. The source of SCP-4992 cannot be retraced, as logistics expunges delivery receipts after shipments from Foundation Freight Companies arrived at their destinations. Addenda Initial Subject Interview The following took place between Agent Carlson and sous chef Eric Bolin of the Site-63 dining facilities shortly after the recognition of SCP-4992 as anonymous. Begin Nog. Hmm, could you walk us through the first time you worked with SCP-4992, please? It was like any other day up until that point. We had several vinaigrettes and gastric geeks to prep for the evening service, and I always make those, as well as any sauces. So I went to the walk-in, grabbed a head or two of Charlotte, and got to work. Pretty soon after that, I started hearing this music. Strange music. Sounds like Alpha and the Chipmunks, you know what I mean? I believe I do, yes. High-pitched voices, uh, kind of squeaky. Yeah, it was almost comical, right? So I'm figuring that the guys were grooving around. We usually take turns with the music selection during prep. Metal is my favorite to play. And I thought, must be Jerry. He's the one who would try to get away with something that goofy. 
Did anyone else that you know hear that music too? Well, that's the thing. I found Jerry and kind of jabbed him saying, that's a good one. Put some real music on. But Jerry didn't know what I was talking about. Just look at me like I was trying to mess with him. I figured out soon I was the only one hearing this. So that's when I started getting a little creeped out. I mean, the elfin voices didn't make that any better. I thought I was having a psychotic episode. It's not unheard of around here. That's why you excused yourself from the shift and sought the on-site doctor. Yeah, you hear all the stories working here, and I don't want to take any chances. I may not be an agent, but I know when something weird is going on. Hmm. And your psych eval is unremarkable. The physician thought it might be an auditory hallucination from lack of sleep. Yeah, I've been taking up Ambien and Melatonin to try to get over the insomnia I've been having. So the explanation made a lot of sense. I went back to work a couple of hours later. What happened then? Well, the staff was in a bit of a fuss, actually. Something about a bad flavor and some of the cooks tried to accuse each other of making their part of the dishes wrong. One guy was arguing, mentioning something about turning off some crazy music over to speakers, and that caught my attention. I stepped in and told him I heard the music too. It had stopped after a song or two, and we quickly found out that he had been working with Charlotte as well, for a relish. So we got Marty to chef the cuisine to taste the stuff. He pinpointed it was the Charlotte, and that was that. We all cut it up to have a tasting, kind of like an educational opportunity from Chef. And soon we were all listening to Little Alvin. That's when Chef contacted you guys. I see. Anything else? No, that was it. Pretty harmless. Just a bit annoying because it isn't my type of music. I like metal myself, so I'll say this though. Once we all realized it wasn't just in any one of our heads, we just stood around and listened for a bit. It wasn't terrible music. In fact, despite the wacky voice of it, the lyrics to the songs were actually speaking about real stuff. Real talk, as one of the chefs put it. Reminded me of growing up, you know. Now that I think about it, put some double brass drums and highly syncopated rhythm guitar parts to it, and I don't know, I think I could like that. And log. Research update. Real-time monitoring of the test subject's auditory nerves had detected electrical, physiological impulses that occur in rhythm with reported durations and tempos of SCPB instances. This observation has disproved the previous assumption that SCPB are auditory hallucinations and has allowed researchers to convert the stimuli to object auditory signatures. SCP-4992-B Example Recording The following was recorded shortly after Agent Finch began removing layers from SCP-4992-3 as part of Experiment 3A. It is included in the record as a usual example of SCP-4992-B. Speech has been transcribed below. farmhouse born of my owner's calloused hands he didn't have much but in his heart was rich as any man he was a plowman he dug the earth so people had their fill by no fault of his own smaller lives were claimed by his skill it was not biased, it took the flowers and the serpents too When he saw his wreckage, from his lips there would come a tune Here go And that we do similar things to those in our shadows With equal indifference, carnage and cyclicity And stirring the soul, shoving the soul Indifference can only be accepted 
and pig fan. I knew a worker and saw to the colony's queen. She was their lifeblood for several generations she had been. Until one day, the plow was work brought about his till. And it found his poor queen, he carried her for hours to the hill. And they all decided to lay her beneath their nursery. And their lives in shambles, animals looking upwards they did sing. Here you go. The bad we do, similar things to those in our shadows with equal indifference. Carnage and cyclicity and stirring the soul, shuffling the soul. Indifference, it can only be accepted painfully, for it is simply fair. The plowman one night returned to my side, but it wasn't long before dark skies. Tower of death and clouds could tell the trees to bow, and I couldn't keep him from this plow. I begged to let him stay as it tore my roof away, but it wasn't long. The plowman's gone. Finally, the sun arrived, and I thought he must have died, but somewhere near, I heard a cry. And that we do similar things to those in our shadows with equals indifference, carnage and cyclicity, stirring the soul, shuffling the soul. Indifference can only be accepted painfully, for it is simply fair.